All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some good time together. Yesterday we heard the news about what happened in France. Very evil, very ugly, very disgusting. And today I'm reading the news. You know, uh, Muslims in France trying to explain that the teacher is a bad person. Actually, they call him a monster. When you hear this word, you think this guy, he did what Muhammad did. Maybe he was like a child molester or something. No. Here in front of us, I'm reading the, the news in Arabic, and there is an original post of a Muslim. I think he is from Algeria. He looked like Algerian or Morocco. And this is the post in Twitter for those who speak French. So he's saying that this person is evil. Why he is posting? Why he is showing a cartoon for a children at the age of 14? The history teacher was teaching uh, freedom of speech. And actually he was very kind to the point, he said, before we start, if there is any Muslim child here, or let's say student, he will be offended by showing the cartoon, please leave the room, so you will not be offended. He did not force them to stay. All the Muslims students, they left except one girl. <clears throat> she insists to stay. And I think she is maybe the one who, you know, reported the story. And then now they are arresting more than nine people. Obviously, they are involved in the, mass in the massacre and killing this poor teacher. <clears throat> this poor teacher, he thought, he is speaking to people who have, uh, you know, I mean, we are human, right? And we act like a human. But he forgot that when he speak about Islam, Islam turned people into monsters. And this filthy man here in Twitter, he is saying that this guy, he is the bad person because why he is showing the cartoon? He did not say shame on the killer. He did not say the killer is filthy. No, he's defending the killer. And he's saying that this person is bad. He's a monster. This is hate. And not only that, he says, stay, keep hate away from our children. He is teaching your children how to be disciplined and how to be good people. He never taught hate. He's saying to you, it is hate to kill somebody for the sake of cartoon. If somebody make cartoon of somebody you believe in, you don't kill him. So this filthy man who was posting in Twitter that the person who is the victim, look how they turn the victim into a criminal overnight. Overnight, the victim became a criminal. And not only that, he is calling him like, you know, my French is not good, but I see the word here, Islamophobe. Who is the one have a phobia? It's you. Those people, they make cartoon about Jesus. You Muslim, you claim that Jesus is your prophet. How come you don't kill people for making cartoon against Jesus? Who is the one have a phobia? It is you. Phobia of cartoon, phobia of the pig, phobia of wine, phobia of music, phobia of freedom, phobia, and yet you, dis you are desperate to go and live there. And actually the fact, which is proven us always right, that the criminal who commit the crime, who was shouting Allahu Akbar after he slaughtered the, the, the sport teacher, he was a refugee. So the stupid French government, they gave a person who is a criminal. How many of them you have right now? Under the name of refugee. I mean, why in the world somebody is coming from Shishenia, he's a refugee? Why, there is a war in Shishenia? How you give him even the refugee papers and what under, under, under what? What there is in Shishenia now? So they keep their borders open and they have no idea who's coming. You know what I mean? And then you end with this. But trust me, this person who is 18 years old who commit the crime, there's many people behind him and they are the one who told him what to do. And now there's nine people who they are arrested. And I believe, you know, strongly that every single 
person who go to his mosque, he is praising him as a hero. You know, the Muslim, they might say to you, this is wrong, etc. And I'm talking about real believers, you know. But the uh, real believers, they will praise this person as, mashallah, alhamdulillah, he's a hero, he's a murderer. He's not a murderer, he's a murderer. Now, what we learn from this? We learn that they are trying to intimidate you, trying to scare you, so you will not put uh, Muhammad cartoon anywhere. Actually, the first thing I did yesterday after I heard the news, I posted Muhammad cartoon in Facebook. This is, this is the first thing I did. And actually, to show support to this victim, poor teacher, who he thought he is speaking to a human being, he had no idea he's talking to who. Let me search to Muhammad cartoon, and I will put it as much as I can on the screen. Hmm. What you can do about it? Come and cut my head. Here we go. This is Muhammad, bees upon him. All right. Are you going to stop us from exposing your false prophet? No. Actually, you just made every single French citizen in France, even those who keep cooking, you know. Actually, you know what? The one who is behind the Islamophobia thing, it was the same teacher people. Those are atheists. They always defend Islam, you know. And they are the one who is behind Islamophobia. Anyone who speak against Islam, they call him Islamophobe, right? And now you are paying the price for you being stupid. What is Islamophobia? Right now, if you see somebody screaming in the street and he holds a knife, you, who, who you will think? He is a Christian, he is a Hindu, he is a Jew, he is a Buddhist, he is a Muslim. What you will think? Right away, you will think he's a Muslim. Is that Islamophobia? Or you have the right to think this way? Even if it's not a Muslim, by the way, because the ones who is doing this is all of them, they share one God and one prophet and one teaching. His name is Muhammad. The name of the God and the name of the Prophet is Allah, and his book is 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 called uh, Knife. So they are hoping now that nobody is going to post cartoon in France after now because here we go. We will send you a kid. He will kill you. And look how coward they are. They are attacking a person from his back. That's what this person he did. He followed him, he hold him from his back, and he slaughtered him from his back. Not only they attack you without warning, not only they attack a person who have no arms and weapon, which is a clear sign of cowardice. Those are not heroes, not only they are, you see, even the criminals, they have some dignity. Even criminals, they have some dignities. Like if you remember in the old days, like you watch a movie, you see a criminal saying to a person, carry your gun, put your gun on. He will not shoot him until he touched the gun. And he is a criminal. It is time for the French people, it's time for, you know, like just two weeks ago, I think a week ago, something like this, uh, the president of France, he says Islam has a problem. And then everybody start attacking him for saying, this Islam has a problem, Islam is the problem. Islam does not have a problem, Islam is a problem. Islam itself is a disgusting cult. Name one thing for me in Islam is not a problem, from beating women, insulting women, abusing women, children abuse, adult abuse, freedom of speech abuse, every, I mean, every single abuse in the world, you will find it in Islam.
Islam does not have a problem. Islam is the problem. I see my neighbors getting out. This guy, he cut the grass when we have a lot of rain. Can you believe it? We have rain, it's very cold outside, and he want to cut the grass. Hmm. I see him coming out. I know, I mean, it's, it's very hard to cut the grass when it's raining hard. I mean, why you want to do it? The grass is wet. Eh. Anyway. I know. <clears throat> I think he will be singing cutting grass in the rain. Uh, yeah, it's weird. Always he cut the grass when it's raining. You know? Because when the grass is wet, you don't cut the grass. You know, it's going to be like, uh, you know, and it's cold. Uh, wait until the... Uh, eh, you know, maybe his wife, she said to him, do it. Or no, you know. No dinner. <clears throat> anyway. So the benefit of being single. I'm just trying to change, you know, give you like a fresh... Uh, from this ugliness we see in the front of us, this filthy cult. So, what we should do as people who believe in freedom, forget about you being a Christian or a Hindu or an atheist or whatever. Because this is not only against... This person was an atheist. This is not against the atheist, it's against all of us. Those people, they don't want you to express your belief. They can express their belief. They can say, you know, I saw the, the, uh, a comment from the Sheikh of Al-Azhar in Egypt. He said, uh, we should, uh, he, he says he condemned uh, the killing of this teacher. But in the same time, he said, we should criminalize anyone who criticizes religion. Look at this coward. Well, if we do criminalize the one who criticizes religion, you will be the first one to go to jail. Because how you can pray to Allah without calling the Christians kuffar? Are you going to still call us kuffar in the mosque? Are you still going to read the Quran where it says, kill them wherever you find them? Are you going to tell the children you teach that the uh, Bible is corrupted? So look at those hypocrite cowards. They say we should criminalize the one, by the way, this is a terrorist teaching too. This is what the point of, of killing this person. They consider him as a criminal because he committed a crime against Allah. So we should criminalize. He himself, the Sheikh of Al-Azhar, he is teaching terrorism by saying that. He just said, well, if you speak against Allah and he's a prophet, you are a criminal. Or what he is saying, we would do it in a legal way, supposedly. And what is the legal way? What is the punishment in Islam for the one who criticized Muhammad? Kill him. So... If you really care for freedom, if you are a Hindu, if you are a Buddha, if you are whatever you are, Christian, atheist, doesn't matter. You should post every day in the morning until those people understand. Every day in the morning, the first thing you do, you drink your coffee and you post a cartoon of Muhammad. So they will learn that we are not going to be afraid of anyone. Otherwise, they think that they scared us and we will not, you know, post uh, Muhammad cartoon. Coronavirus, why I wanna call you? Why I need to call you, my friend? I mean, what's wrong with you? And how I'm going to call you? Like, are you a famous person? Here we go, I will block you. I mean, you are so annoying. Did you see me say, uh, you know, my, actually, I'm not going to use Skype no more. I'm going to use Paltor from now on because each one of you, he sent me a message. I open Skype. If you are a person who sent me a message a year ago in Skype, I have to go back a year ago to find you. It doesn't show in the top. I'm really sick of this uh, Skype thing. Uh, mostly I will start using PalTalk, it's easier, you know, each time you send me a message it's going to appear on in the, in the top and I will see it. Uh, but why I want to call you anyway? I mean, do you, are you a sheikh to want to debate me? Who are you? Are coronavirus 5G? Even you could not find a name for yourself.
yeah actually the the calling thing i'm going to make it just only for debate of those who they are they claim to be something big shot you know not for kids uh do we have any comment anyone My neighbor is like your uncle? Really? Uh, okay. Well, I hope that's your uncle is not my neighbor then. Sound fishy. <laughs> and I hope his wife is not your wife and his wife too. <laughs> uh, make a new Skype ID. There's no benefit of this. You know, Pal Talk is easier actually. And. Uh, the sound is good, quality is good, and it does the same job. It, and it's for free. You can create a nickname for two seconds, in two seconds. Actually, always I used to use a Skype, you know, I mean, uh, Palto. Skype thing, it was new. Um, and the Skype is very annoying. If I open my Skype right now, I will find like thousands of unanswered messages. Because you cannot answer them, you know? It's impossible. And then if you are a person who, as I said, if you if you are a person who texts me or call me uh, three months ago and you send me a message, then it's not going to appear. It's, I have to search for you. And if you tell me your name, it's going to be even more hard because the, everybody has almost the same name. I mean, anyway. <clears throat> uh, you, you can use it if you want to call me you can use it i mean it's up to you nobody use your well uh, talk don't use it then and why people want to call me anyway as you see my english is funny and my arabic is funny <laughs> oh boy ah <sighs> so uh we will never stop saying the truth about Muhammad. Doesn't matter what they try to do. They always, they will try to in intimidate you, try to scare you, try, you know, they can try whatever they want. And they can be successful if you are a person who gets scared. Me, myself, that will not work with me. Do your best. Um... Muhammad was a very handsome, radish face. Well, I don't know how Muhammad used to look like. I don't care. You see the cartoon here, you know, I mean, it's made by atheist. Actually, there's a better cartoon than this one. This one means nothing for me. There is a cartoon made by a person. He's an ex-Muslim. His name is Muhammad Abdul Aziz. Uh, maybe he's using a fake name. But... Let me find it. Um, it's appearing in, in Amazon, but I want to find. Yeah, this guy he made a really good cartoon. It's a drawing cartoon, uh, simply telling you stories about Muhammad, what he did, you know. Which is very, very smart, you know, very nice. Let us see if I can find it. <clears throat> yeah, I know where, like, you know, I'm sure you can find it somewhere. Um... Yeah. So anyway, uh, I will try to find it somewhere, but uh, uh, he made a very nice cartoon, which is very, very, uh, very interesting. And 
Let us see, maybe here, cartoon. Uh, Muhammad cartoon. Yeah, when you need something, it's very hard to find it, you know. Yeah, but I'm sure you can find it somewhere. <clears throat> anyway, his cartoon is very good. And I, I put his cartoon many times in, uh, in the screen here. Let me see if I have some of it in my folders, you know, if I save some. Uh, maybe. Uh, I have one of them. Here we go. Yeah, this is an example of his cartoon. The good thing about this cartoon, he, you know, he, uh, he described the story and he gave the reference of it. And it's written like it's a drawing, a nice drawing, very effective, and can be a very good way for education, especially for young ones. And even it can be used an, as, a, as an, a way to express uh, yourself as an adult by posting uh, such a cartoon. So here the story in the front of us, uh, Muhammad supposedly claiming in the Quran that Allah, he cursed the Jews and he made them pigs and monkeys for fishing in Saturday. Right. What is my next my next big project? I was thinking maybe I don't know the Muslim they're trying to inspire me. If the Muslim they keep making a threat to us of like what happened now, I might make a special magazine of Muhammad cartoon stories. Already actually I, I yesterday I mentioned uh, some they said they are willing to volunteer, but I don't want to start it for now. I will wait for the Muslims to help us. If they really, they push hard on us and they wanna, uh, they do, they support these crimes. We will see, you know. Uh, you know, for me, I, my purpose is not to insult anyone. I mean, I'm not insulting Muhammad. I'm just showing you who is he. I mean, this is a story here. The story, this guy who made the story. He did, did he make it or this is what in the Quran? It's in the Quran. The guy who for fishing, go for fishing. He end, you know, in the morning he wake up. He's a, he's a monkey. So he's not making fun of you. He's telling the truth. Why you wanna? Why you wanna go upset? This is what the Quran says. Why the truth hurt? It's what is in your book. Your book says, the Jews, Allah, He played games with them. He made the fish come to them in Saturday, and He forbid them from doing fishing in Saturday. I mean, have you ever heard of such a movie? I say to you, you can drink water only on Saturday because fish, fishing for them is like water. This is their food. They are fishermen. They live in an island, supposedly. Little tiny village by, by the shore. So Allah, he forbid the fish because, you know, Allah is controlling the fish too. You know, he has a remote control. So the fish does not come in Saturday. Sorry, in, in the whole week. It come only in Saturday. In the same time, he forbid them from fishing in Saturday. So if we if we go uh, if we go and see uh, the Quran, we will find the story here in front of us. Read carefully. Hey, tell them about those people. Tell them, okay, what? Tell them about what? About those people who they uh, trans, you know, transgress in the day of Saturday. What happened in the day of Saturday? Allah, He made the fish appear to them in Saturday, and He forbid them from doing anything in Saturday. This is the story, and the translation here is very funny, by the way, as usual. I mean, have you ever heard? Of a Muslim translation makes sense. Ask them about the town by the sea. I mean, look at this. I mean, the guy is asking them about the town in the sea. How those people they will know supposedly something happened in the past. How they will know there's a witnesses for this. Ask them, ask them. Ask them. Ask them about the people who they used to live by the sea. Okay, who are they? Those are Jewish people. Okay. How we knew that they are Jewish? Because they did not observe the Sabbath. Okay, hold on. So they did not, and their fish would come to them only in Saturday. Look at this. You go and read the interpretation of the story. You will find all Muslims agree that Allah, he forbid the fish from coming to them in any day except in Sabbath. So those poor people, they stay all day long. 
waiting for fish all week and the fish never show up and then in Saturday the fish jump in the top of the water and say ah, 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 we are here you cannot fish us da, 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 you know and and then uh, because they broke the Sabbath because they disobey Allah what happened to them Allah he made them pigs and monkeys Now here you get you might get confused because if you are a person who is a fan of Darwin, the atheist, you might say to yourself, "What happened here?" I mean, the atheist they say to us we used to be monkeys, we became a human. The Muslim they say to us we used to be human, we became monkeys. So Allah, what Allah he did today? Those who they they violated the Sabbath, Allah he made them pigs and monkeys. Uh, no, we don't have the book yet in the French, my friend. Sex and Allah in French, we don't have it. I'm not reading too much, by the way, in the, in the chat. If you are texting me in the chat, you know, I was reading there. So anyway, and here, by the way, I mean, this is a, this is a perfect cartoon. This why the one, this person, he made the cartoon. It's funny. It's true. Why you must get upset? This is what the Quran is saying. And he, even he is showing you the hadith from Sahih Bukhari. If you go down, you will see this guy. He is even posting the reference for you from your Islamic reference, which is approved by you, printed by you, translated by you. So look at this mad, mad, you know, madness cult. You show them what they are teaching. You show them what they are believing. You read for them the text. They translated and they are the one who printed. And they are the one who publish it for free. And the second you read for them, they got offended. You can search Muhammad Abdul Aziz cartoon. You will find it. He have a book in Amazon actually. I think it's. I don't think this is uh, the publish in the internet. It's by him. Maybe it's somebody you know. I hi hijacked the book or something as usual. Right, so though you know though, those people when they when they when they complain, you know, you ask yourself, they are you are complaining about what exactly? What is the what is the reason for you to complain, and where is the complaint coming from? We just show you what is in your book and what is behind the story, and here we go. This is the story, the statement of Allah, and ask them, Oh Muhammad, about the uh, the, the town that was by the sea, etc. You know, Bukhari, Varium, twelve thirty two. Page no, even he's giving you the page number. They became monkeys. Why? For fishing in Saturday. By the way, this is true. I remember there was a Jewish friend of mine. I was outside my 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 apartment, and then you know he came from uh, he came from uh, with, a, with a truck, and I said to him, "Hey, Jack." You know, Jack did not answer. You know, I saw him in the car. By the way, he did not answer me, and he you know he came and he have like a fish in his hand. You know, he was doing fishing, and then. I noticed he is hiding his face and he was wearing a short, but I noticed that his legs look different. They have a lot, a lot of hair. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Let me see if I can find you uh, something, you know, to explain to you the situation. The situation is very, very difficult. True story. As you know, everything, you know, is true story here. Uh, <clears throat> Just to explain to you what happened, because many of you maybe you don't have a good imagination, so we need to, we need to do the same as the teacher who did use the images to explain. So anyway, let me see if I can find uh, you know a picture of my friend, uh, my neighbor Jack Shalom, according to Muhammad's story, not according to the truth. You know. Uh, okay, hold on. No, this is not Jack. This is his cousin. Uh, okay, oh, anyway, yeah, no, not him, this is Netanyahu, oh no, that's not what we want, um, man, yeah, I mean, we found everybody except, uh, except my friend, the fisherman, oh boy, where is, it? where, where we can find this, uh, uh, here we go, you know, we found, we found, uh, 
Oh, oh no, this is not him actually. This is the, he's a twin. Hold on, you know, it's not easy to find the picture of those, you know, because now they became. I mean, I mean you know what happened after you did fishing and such are they? It's not easy, you know, fishing and such are they? You crazy people. I mean, how how you do that? How in the world you do such a mistake fishing in Saturday? Aren't you afraid of Allah? And by the way, why Allah is not doing? I mean, how many uh, 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 in Israel they have a festival for gays and lesbians in Saturday? Can you believe it? So how come Allah will make you? Uh, here we go. I found finally we found the picture of Jack Shano. All right. Just to show you how Allah can punish those who they broke the Sabbath of Allah and his punishment is severe. So you can learn from that. And you know, yeah, he's, you know, he, he went fishing, you know, here we go. This is my friend, uh, Jack Shalom. He went for fishing in Saturday and look what happened. All right. This is true story, brother. Allah, he says so. I mean, so the Muslim now, they will be offended. You are making fun. This is what happened. This guy, he went fishing. He came back like this. This is what your book, this is what your book saying. So if we make Quran, if we make cartoon about it, you go crazy. But this is what your book saying. So what we will do? Change your book. I'm not going to show you his face, by the way, because he is so proud. I mean, this guy is so proud. And I told him, what are you proud about, man? Don't you see what happened to you? Look at his face. He's looking up like he's so proud. Look at him. Oh, boy. Now, this is a very true story. It's in the Quran. How, how, how is it not going to be? Don't say that. Don't say the word true story. The Muslim will be offended now. For sure, it's a true story. This is a true story proven scientifically, accurately, everything. You know, everything is. There is a lot of witnesses for that story. I'm telling you, I saw him myself, myself, brother. I, I swear by Allah, brother. Give me the Quran, I will swear in the Quran. Uh, or I will swear by something more expensive, uh, as Allah he did, he swear by the fig. You know? Yeah, this is a true story. The guy, he went fishing on Saturday. You know, he, you know, he broke the, the Sabbath of Allah. He woke up in the morning, and you know, like wood. Like, actually, it's not in the morning. Right away when he was coming, I start noticing how much hair he have there. I mean, like he's, he's wearing a short, you know? And he, what happened to him? Why this hair is all over? Like women in the Eastern, we are hairy. We have to admit, you know, uh, very hairy actually. But I mean, this is not this is not normal, you know. So then I noticed that there is the hair is continue growing and growing, growing. And then I said to him, Jack Sharon, do you notice what uh, happened to you? Guess what happened to Jack Sharon? He could not even answer me, speaking to me in Hebrew. He said to me, <laughs> you know, like what? Even he cannot talk. He turned totally to a monkey. And those are true stories, you know, you, nobody can deny those stories. You cannot deny them, I cannot deny them. There is a proof of them scientifically, you know. There's a scientist, uh, he's from Japan, he's very well known, his name uh, Yama Aidu Lai Yama, very well known, you know. I mean, to be sure that he is true, I mean, look, the name starts with Yama. Obviously, he's Japanese, you know, Yamaha. Yeah, Suzuki, you know, whatever, yeah, like, you know, Yamaha. Anyway, so Yamaha, I do lie, Yamaha, very well-known, uh, you know, the Muslim, when they make an article, they, they put a bunch of names. They have nothing to do with the articles to prove what they are saying. A scientist from uh, Belgium, his name is <coughs> Bengrion. Bengrion from Belgium, okay. He said, what is the Quran saying is true. Do you remember the story of George Bernacho? Do you remember? Hmm. About the coffee? Uh, many, many years ago, a magazine in Singapore, they publish in their magazine, I don't even know how to say his name, George Bernacho. Since we know it, we always used to be monkeys, as you know, our language is not good. So, <clears throat> what he said about Prophet Muhammad? The Muslim they publish in their article. Uh, 
Let me read for you the quotation. Give me a second. This is a website, it's called Islam Info. I mean, it must be true. This is a true story. Islam what? Islam Info. Why did Sir, they call him Sir, because supposedly, you know, he respect the Prophet. George Bernard Shaw believed that the Prophet Muhammad, he could solve all the world problem today. He, he said that. He did. Read this. Sir George Bernard Shaw, in the book called The Genuine Islam, volume number one, uh, number eight, 1936. I challenge any Muslim to show me the book, it's called The Genuine of Islam, number one, volume, uh, volume one, uh, number eight, I think this is page number eight. What it says, what the, I mean, where do we can find even this thing? Where we can find it, it's not exist, it's a fabrication. George Bernacho, he said, actually, there's a, there's a person who is a, a, an ex-Muslim in Arabic uh, uh, TV station. He made a program about what really George Bernacho, he said about Muhammad. He said the opposite, that Muhammad is a bad person. He's a savage man. So they created a, a, a reference and they put it in their magazine and now the muslim they copy who, who is a muslim want to show us the reference where we can't find it we cannot find it and you know muhammad he can solve any problems in 10 minutes this is why the middle east is messed up in his life in his lifetime muhammad do you know what happened to muhammad let me show you how he can solve any problem in 10 minutes Bernard Shaw, he said he can solve any problem when he's drinking his coffee in the morning. When Muhammad, he had a fight with his two wives, Aisha and Hafsa. Allah, he sent Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, he sent him a direct message, a very direct message, saying to him, the help is coming. The help against what? Against two women, they are five foot tall. With my respect to women. If you, Allah, he said Quran, he sent the Quran to Muhammad, talking about the wives of Muhammad. The wives of Muhammad, they are causing him problems. And Muhammad, he cannot fix the problem. But remember, he can fix all the problem in the world. In five minutes, while he's drinking his coffee in the morning. But his household is horrible. So Allah, he sent him a support Quran from the seven galaxy behind the seven elves, behind the seven tables, or using the seven pens and using the ink of seven inkwell. And he said to him, tell your wife the following. If you repent to Allah, then your heart have listened. But if you band together against him, then, oh boy. Allah is his protector. And Jibreel. If, 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 if. All of this for a guy he is fighting against two women. I mean, let me change the translation here. This is heavy. I mean, the guy, he can solve the problem of the world in five minutes. Allah is his protector. I mean, protect him from who? From Aisha and Hafsa. But if you back each up, if you back each other against him, truly, truly Allah is his protector and Zibreel. Is that enough? No, the fight bigger than Allah and, Allah and Jibreel, they cannot cover even five meters of the fight. So who else? And every righteous among those who believe Shishinia, Pakistan, Mujahideen from uh, uh, Taliban, ISIS, uh, you know, uh, 
Azerbaijan, Erdogan, Turkey, all of them, they will join the fight against Aisha and Hafsa because this is a big fight. Every righteous one among the believers. Oh, and then, and furthermore, is it enough to have Allah and Jibreel and every believer? No. And furthermore, all the angels, all of this to solve a problem between Muhammad and two women. So they fabricate an article, or let us say a reference, about George Bernard Show. You know, anyone he die, after he die is famous, the Muslim, they say he convert to Islam. I will not be surprised uh, that Muslims, after I die, they will say Christian Prince, he converted to Islam. Ali, Ali Baha, Bahaba, no, I don't dare to debate you. I mean, you are, you are Ali Baba. <laughs> How I'm going to de de debate you and you have a picture of a woman. Don't you see what the women, women, they are scaring the hell of Muhammad and Muhammad and Allah are not capable of stopping them to the point they are asking help for the following names. Let me count for you. For me, I will stay away from women. Thank you very much. I will debate any sheikh with the long beard. A woman, no way. No, unbelievable. No way. Big mistake. Allah is his protector. Okay, is that enough? No. Jibreel to brother. Uh -huh. against two women and every righteous one uh -huh. is that enough no and furthermore the angels all of this to fight two women you want me to debate you alone and you are a woman do you think i'm crazy or you know i'm smarter than this you know you will you will destroy me in, in two seconds what are you talking about nowhere there to destroy to debate you you know Especially the prophet, he said they are half a brain. I mean, which brain I'm going to debate? The one is half empty or the one is half full? I mean, the second you say to me, you are going to debate me. Uh, I wonder, I mean, how in the world, how, how smart you are to be a Muslim, to accept somebody saying you are half a brain? How do how you accept that? I can show you the difference. Your prophet, he says, most of you are going to go to hell and ask him why. He says, because you have a lack of intellect, intelligence, and wisdom and religion. <clears throat> what do you think? Anyway, uh, this is supposedly, I'm going to make a short video. Hmm. Huh. Look at the time. Oh boy. I mean, it's already three o'clock. Hmm. Do we have any Muslim have any comment? Are you scared to debate me, Uncle Jamal? No, I said, Uncle Jamal. I cannot debate you. I mean, come on, Uncle Jamal. Your name is Uncle Jamal. I mean, if your name is Jamal, then I will debate you. But your uncle, I cannot because I will respect you. Then uh, your name is Uncle. Hmm. All of us, we are afraid of you. <clears throat> hmm? Okay, you know what? What What about you? You debate me and you answer me. Do you really believe? I want to I wanna examine first if you are truly a Muslim. But, but because you, you might be a fake one. Do you really believe that those people who they did fishing in Saturday, Allah, he made them pigs and monkeys? Mr. Jamal? Jamal, yeah, Jamal. Do you have an answer, Jamal? Do you think this is a true story? That there is people who did fishing in Saturday, Allah, he made them pigs and monkeys, or this is fake? What do you think? Hmm? Well, what happened to Uncle Jamal? Uncle Jamal is washing dishes now. Maybe one of the wives, she, she appeared. And now he is... Uh... <clears throat> Thank you.
Are you there, Jamal? Do you agree with this story? That the person, those, the whole village, man, the whole town, they did fishing on Saturday. Allah, he cursed them all. He made them pigs and monkeys. Ah, this is ultimate fart. I forget about him. This guy is just a kid. Uh, anyway, you know, true story. Those all true stories. You know, I, I I was there at that time actually. You know, like you know, in the Middle East, anything Muhammad he say, all of, all of the, you know, I I bear witness that there is no God but, but Allah. They say, how you bear witness? You never saw Allah. You don't even what the word. You don't even know what the word Allah mean. I never saw a Muslim. He can tell me where is the word Allah is coming from and what the word Allah mean. They don't know what Ibrahim mean. They don't know what what Isa mean. They don't know what Maryam mean. They don't know what Moses mean. They don't know who is Israel. They don't know. They don't know anything. Or what they know? Alhamdulillah. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Allahu Akbar. Nothing more. The second you ask them a deep question, they say to you, the smarter one of them, he says, he says to you, there's a hole in the narrative. There's what? There's a hole in the narrative. Yeah, according to Muhammad too, uh, you know, he he was suspecting that the the, the rats the same, you know. What do you think? I mean, this is my neighbor, he is the most crazy man ever. It is raining outside and he is working. It's cold. It's raining and he is working. I mean, I think this guy, his wife, she said to him, you cannot get inside the house unless you do it now. This is what happened to you, you know, you just get married immediately. Unbelievable. Maybe he's working under his shed. I don't know. I hear noise. Do we have any, what happened to Jamal? Don't talk about donkey. Look what Jamal, he said to me. Liar, yeah, donkey. Hold on. Did you say yeah? Did you say yeah? I, don't know. I mean, you are just you, you. You are not going to go to heaven, my friend. Look what what Mr. Jamal he said to me. Liar, yeah, donkey. Okay, hold on. Let us go to the chapter. It's called Yeah, seen. Yeah, what? Yeah, seen. Uh huh. As long as you mention yeah. What Yasin mean? Do you know what Yasin mean? Do you have any idea? Yasin. What Yasin mean? See, I'm just, you are inspiring me. Yasin. What in the world is it? What is this? Sin is a word mean or it's a name of the moon god yeah is a word mean god do you see it yeah donkey what kind of god he say he is the moon god yeah i seen okay what, what does just see me Every single Abdul in the world, he will give you a different definition for this. In the best scenario, they will say to you, Allah knows best what he meant by this. You do not need to be genius to find it. Go and search and go. Well, God sin. God sin. Yeah, is a word mean God. Sin is the name of the God. So who is the donkey here now? So you, Jamal, you inspired me. Thank you very much. I don't know what to do without you. There's two people I do not know what to do without them. You and my neighbor. Uh, uh, Uncle Jamal is asking us. See, Uncle Jamal, now he changed the topic. The fastest people who change topic in the words and their divers are those who believe in Allah. Look how fast the topic changed. Alhamdulillah. One plus one plus one is equal to what? You tell me. I want to ask you the question, actually, because you must them if you read with me. In the same chapter, it says, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Okay, how Allah is a three and one in the same time? Huh? How Allah is a three and one in the same time? 
Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. The translation is false. Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Three names of Allah. Allah is one. He have three names. Or is one person. He will say to me is one person, but those are names. Oh, wonderful. Okay, let us go to different verse in the Quran, and everybody will start laughing right now. One plus one, huh? Well, who is the one who's saying plus? Are you the one who's adding plus? <laughs> you know, one of the funny logic of Muhammad, and they say to you, Allah is one. Allah is one what? <laughs> ah, stupidity is amazing. Let us go and see what the Quran says. Is it possible in Islam that you Muslim you believe that one can be three in the same time? Is that possible or Christians are making things up? All right. <clears throat> Let me show you the Trinity of Islam, which everybody will laugh at you. This is your Quran, chapter 4, verse 171. Everybody be my witness. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to what? Uh, to 3, not to 1, you funny people. I mean, it's a simple mathematic. Even Zakir Naik, he said that. They ask him, Zakir Naik. Why we don't teach allow teaching Christianity in our schools? He said, Brother Tita, first of all, if you are a mathematic teacher and you got teacher saying to you one plus one plus one is equal to one. Obviously, he have a wrong math. So I'm going to allow you, you idiot. It's in your Quran, not in our book. We in our book. We don't believe one plus one plus one. Where do you get this from? We don't believe in one plus one plus one. We believe that this is one God. Here you will find that Jesus is a three and one in the same time in the Quran. Read carefully with me. And please show respect to Zakir Naik, you know. He's the best between all the rest. He's a certified idiot. The rest are not certified yet. So if we read the Quran, O oh people of the book, commit no excuse in your religion. nor say of Allah ought but the truth. Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, is between two brackets, no more, it's not exist in the Quran. He is a messenger. Okay, so number one, he is what? He is a messenger. Let us highlight. A messenger as what? As a man. Okay, so he's a messenger. He's a man. Okay. And he is his word. Mm -hmm. Jesus is a man and a word in the same time. Okay, so he's two now, yet but he is one. And in the top of that, he is a, a spirit proceeding from him. So Jesus is the three and one in the same time. He is a man in the flesh. He is the word of God. And he is a spirit. One plus one plus one. Which one of them is Jesus? Are you there, Mr. Jamal? Your book saying that Jesus is three and one. Because are you spirit or you are a flesh? Are you the word of God? Are you? No, you are not. Jesus is the word of God. Yet he is a man. And yet he is a spirit from God proceeding, I-N-G, from him. The funny is, this is the same verse, say, so, say no trinity. <laughs> It's like saying, say no coffee. Do you want coffee? We have coffee. Say no coffee. The same verse to fight the Trinity is the same verse contain Trinity. And here, you know, by the way, you will notice that the Muslim when they say one plus one plus one, they are smarter than Allah. Why? Because in the Quran, the Quran did not believe that there is a three person. The Trinity in the Quran does not exist. In the Quran, the Quran itself believe that the Nasara, or supposedly the Christian, they believe that Allah himself is Jesus. Let us go to the yellow page of Muhammad. All right. <clears throat> How 
how the Messiah, how you Muslims understand the Trinity different from Allah? Uh, come on, this website froze. Unbelievable. Huh. Chapter 5, verse number 17 says, Those who disbelieve, who say, Allah is the Christ. Mm -hmm. I thought to Christians they believe in the Trinity. One plus one plus one, as you said, right? You Quran saying the Christian they don't believe in one plus one plus one. They believe in one. And they say Allah is a Christ. So who is the smart here, you or your God? Ah, I have to admit that you are smarter than Allah. Actually, I saw a detergent. It's good to wash in panties. It's called Jamal. I'm not sure they were talking about you, Jamal. Don't be offended. But it might be like similar description. What do you think? Your God Allah not only is a stupid about understanding the Trinity, he think too that Mary is part of the Trinity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Juju, Jinju, I'm going to block you if you use bad language. I will put you out, time out, for using anyone will use a bad language. If you repeat it again, we will block you. Never use a dirty tongue here. What, well, whatever we use here, we use for the purpose of education. You can answer the Muslim, you can refute the Muslim, but there's no need to use a filthy language because that will not make you better than him, will make you really filthy. Before you come here, wash your mouth, please. So, as you see, I read the Quran wrong. Oh, okay. Hey, uh, even your name is miracle number 19, which is the most funny miracle ever. <laughs> I searched it in the Quran. I could not find the number 19. <laughs> you are, you make hate. Shut up your mouth. You read Quran wrong way. I make hate. Okay, hold on. You see, I am in chapter number five, and you are, it's your lucky day. You just say the one who make hate, he should shut up. Well, your Quran says in chapter five, verse 14, Allah will spread hatred between the Christians. Which means, Abdul, the one who gave me hate, if I have it, which is not true, is your God. Shall we, me and you, say to Allah, shut up? Do you see it? The same, it's your lucky day. Same page, just we go back a few verses. Allah, he provoked hatred, enmity and hatred among them until the day of resurrection. So why are you are saying to me you have hate? If anyone, he is a Christian, he have hate, which is not right. It's coming from Allah. Allah is the devil. I mean, if Allah is the one spreading hate as we speak, so what the devil he do for a living? You know what I mean? Not only that, my friend, let us look at this. Allah He is the one who make people enemy to the Prophet. You see it, brother? We did make every to, for every messenger an enemy, evil ones among men and jinn. Who is the one who made them enemy? Allah. So the one who made the cartoon, Allah, he made him make cartoon. And you Muslim, you kill the one who make cartoon. 
But the one who made the cartoon, he mean he's just obeying Allah. Who is the stupid here? Have you ever heard of a stupid cult more than this cult? Hmm. And there is another verse, by the way. It says, "We made for every prophet. We made." We made, we made, who's talking? Allah, by the way, is one God, but he is we. <laughs> I think Allah, he have a broken mirror. Maybe his wife, she throws something at him. She broke the mirror by mistake. And then Allah, he look at the mirror. He see we. He don't see I. We. You ask the Muslim, why Allah keeps saying we? He says, this is for respect. Allah respecting himself, man. Unbelievable. They say to you, kings, they say that. So kings, they say that. So Allah is copying the kings. If a king, he says that. So Allah, he copy what they, this is a, a proud person of uh, foolishness. Because what we and what I. You say I, you say we, not, nothing will change. Still you are a king. If he is God, who cares if he is saying we or I what what we so we made for every prophet an enemy among the sinners uh -huh. so Allah he made you an enemy and then he will punish you for being his enemy genius I uh, have the best lafar in YouTube I order it from lafar eBay dot yum are you there? As you see, the Muslims, they inspire me, by the way, what to say next. I have nothing to say. I mean, that's it. We are done. What do we, I mean, who, who is more funny than Muhammad? There, nobody can complain. Muhammad is hilarious. Why you need to go to school to study how the baby is made? Go to the Quran, you will find it. Women have a sperm having coming from her ribs. The man have a sperm coming from his backbone. And I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if the Muslim they found that Allah he predicted Amazon. Just read, just read, it's coming. Brother and sister, I'm going to tell you today something impossible. It's going to blow your mind. Do you know that, brother? That it's mentioned in the Quran that Amazon will take over the business. And people will not do trade business no more. Zachary Amazon in the Quran? Exactly. What are you talking about, man? You lost your mind. Amazon in the Quran? And, okay. Actually, I can tell you not only Amazon, I can tell you the flex. Net who? Flex. Amazon and Netflix in the Quran? Don't you think, Zach and Naik, that you Muslims, your brain is very flexible? Christopher, you are very stupid and your English is funny. It is flex able, not flexible. Ah, flex able? That's so good. So Netflix and Amazon and what about Google? Brother Setter, I'm going to surprise. I can tell you Google in the Quran too. Man, everything in the Quran. I mean, doesn't don't even try. It is in the Quran. You go left, you go right, it doesn't. <laughs> All right, I think we have we should stop for today, otherwise. I hope I did not offend anyone because you know like if you offend them you know they will kill you I mean come on I'm scared uh, I'm playing with fire we don't talk about playing with fire my friend if Allah he said if he Allah he is the one who said he made for every prophet an enemy who is the one playing with the fire to your God and Mahdi what you can do about it what does that mean? Are you making a threat? Do you want some coffee, Mahdi? My friend, your prophet is the joke of everybody. What you can do about it? You are playing with fire. Mean. Yeah. Uh, do you know? No, I do not know. Don't give me names. I don't care for names, my friend. I don't care all those names. Who cares? Any Muslim? 
And instead of uh, this guy, he is answering us, Mehdi, he says you are playing with fire. By the way, your name is Mehdi, right? Man, you you see, you Muslims, you inspire me. Do you know, guys, that Al-Mahdi, he is a person who is born from a woman, her name is Nargis. Some they say Maryam. And he is born from her thigh. Oof, 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 oof. Let me explain to you what happened. Your name is Al-Mahdi, right? Okay. Good for you, good for you. Excuse me, I'm going to use a picture of a woman leg. <clears throat> but in Islamic way. Uh... Give me a second. All right. I remember Muhammad, he said that women uh, in heaven, specifically in heaven, they will be see-through. They will be see-through. I can show the reference, you know the reference. So this is, this is one of the women doing shopping in the heaven of Allah. I mean, even in heaven, they will go there, women, they are doing shopping. Can you believe it? Unbelievable. <laughs> hey, women, where are you going? We are doing shopping. But you are in the heaven of Allah. Everything here is... Exactly, because it's everything is available. We are going to do shopping. It's for free. So listen. According to you, Mahdi, you Muslims believe that Al-Mahdi is born from this area. From her leg. Like why? Hello? <laughs> because brother Al Mahdi, there's no way he will born from a woman a private part, brother. I'm surprised that he is not born of her uh, belly bomb hmm. your name is al-mahdi you didn't even ask yourself how funny the story of this al-mahdi person <clears throat> prove that muhammad have no sons the quran says so the quran says so what the quran says muhammad lam yakun he was not the father of any of your children, any of your men. We have no sons. Anyone want some coffee? You mean that billion, two billion? The Muslim they became two billion. Yesterday it was 0.6. Two weeks before it was 1.4. Next month there are three billions. My friend, two billion, one billion. Whoever believe in those stories is a stupid fool. Do you mean two billions? We are way more than you. What two billions? Half of Muslim countries, 90% of Muslim countries are not Muslims. Just give them freedom and you will see. And to prove it to you that nobody of you is Muslims, none of you practice Islamic teaching. Do you watch TV? Huh? Do you take pictures? Do you listen to music? You do. None of you is Islamic. Every single, single country in the Muslim countries, actually, according to uh, Google, uh, you know, research, they found that number one people who search for porn on the internet, number one is Pakistan. Praise be to Allah. Alhamdulillah. Pakistan. But let me show you what your prophet said about the music. And just to show you in a second that you are a false Muslim. You're a prophet, he says, the one who do any of the following. Allah will make their faces and their body pigs. Show me one Muslim, he play music or is, at least a singer. I mean, forget about the one who listen to the music. What about the singer? What about the Muslim woman? She is a dancer. Read it. 
People among my nation. Look at this prophecy. I mean, people, they were doing this in his time, the idiot. He himself was drinking wine, calling people by other name, and he was using music and instrument. When, when Abu Bakr, he entered his house, he said, the, the instrument of the devil in the house of the prophet <laughs> will be played for them. And singing girls, singing girls was singing for Muhammad in his house too. Allah will cause the earth to swallow them <laughs> and turn them into monkeys and pigs. Do you see it? Now it's your turn to get me busted. Do you know anyone who Allah made him a pig and a monkey for doing this? As you see, this is Sahih. And the other one, let us see. This one is Daif. This one is Hassan. This one is good. This one, uh, Sahih Al Bukhari. Do you see it? The chapter name, the one who regard an alcoholic drink, lawful for it to drink and call by other name. Look at that chapter number or name. Are you there, uh, Mr. Tubirian? <clears throat> Discuss Petra, the second city of Islam. My friend, I know that there's many people they came with this theory. It can be true. In the beginning, actually, I did refuse it, but it makes sense after I, I, I because in the, in the beginning, actually, I, I spoke against it because the one who presented the video for me, he, he cut the videos. So when I watched the whole thing, it makes sense. But why want I waste my time with this? I will leave that for a historian. I'm not a historian. For me, Muslims believe in this garbage. Eh, give them their garbage. Don't waste your time. If you say to them, Islam was in Petra, etc., okay, keep talking. Here, they will see how silly, how stupid Islam is. So which one is more effective for me? I'm not against you know, those who they are saying what they are saying. I mean, it can be true, it can be proven, maybe. But for me, I try to focus in what they believe in, not to waste my time with something they don't believe in anyway. This is going to be good for historian, history teaching. You know what I mean? Why they call him Abu Qasim? They call him Abu Kapsha too. <laughs> Do you know that one of the names of Muhammad is Abu Kapsha? Abu Kapsha? Oh boy. Who is Kapsha? Because Muhammad used to worship a star. That's why they call him Abu Kapsha. Go right now, if you are a person who speaks Arabic, a Muslim or not Muslim, search for it and you will die laughing. No, I don't have a dog. But maybe somebody of the neighbors he have. So. Yeah, Abu Kapsha. This is his name. I can search right now Rasulullah Abu Kapsha you will find it in their books Muslim cannot deny it they cannot say it's not true etc you know any Muslim yeah I think maybe his, his dog is upset because they left him out in the cold in the, in the rain any Abdul anyone No, yeah. So anyway, as you see here, Muhammad he made another false prophecy. He claimed that those who do such a thing, Allah will make them pigs and monkeys, and they will stay like this until the day of resurrection. Which means this will not happen in the day of resurrection. He will do it to them right away. Mountains will fall on them, the earth will swallow them, and then, uh, you know. Allah will make you a pig and a monkey. Actually, Muhammad, he is very funny with the, I mean, Muhammad, he's stuck with pigs and monkeys and stuff. And, uh, you know, the Quran, Muhammad, he uh, said to the Christians, if you don't believe in me, 
Allah will erase your faces and he will make the pigs and monkeys the same as the people of Sabbath if you don't believe in me you see it again it's a false prophecy what, 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 what is going to Muslim they cannot say this is what happened in the judgment day as you see he said to them the same as he did to the people of Sabbath which means something happened right away when they commit there is transgress not in the day of judgment I wanted to buy to buy Quran translated by you I, I uh, it's not done yet I, I I'm working in it but you know actually I'm thinking to take a like little break time so I can work faster in my book you know the going online take too much uh, of your loving energy <laughs> Anyway, uh, you look ugly. I'm glad if you can erase your face. I have a competition here. So, yeah, Muhammad, he threatened the Christians. If you don't believe in me, Allah will make you a pig and a monkey. And nothing happened. At the same time, they, they cannot say this is for judgment day because he's saying clearly, this is the same as we did to the people of those who broke the Sabbath. He did already. So this is not will wait for judgment day. Name for me one Christian, Allah, he made him a pig or a monkey for not believing in Muhammad. In the same time, Muhammad, he said in different hadith, just to show you how funny this guy is. He said that the one who raised his head before the Imam, and by the way, I saw Erdogan doing it. Erdogan in the video, the video is there on YouTube. He rose his head before the Imam finished the prayer. I need to find it again to make a video about it. And then, do you think Erdogan, his face became... A face of a donkey. Let us see. Uh, let us see. I mean, you cannot search for something and you. Here we go. Here we go. Do you see it? What's wrong with this guy? I mean, he's stuck with donkey and, you know, he will, Allah will make you a pig and a monkey and now he's adding donkey. Prophet said, is it he who raised his head before the Imam, afraid that Allah may transform his head into that of a donkey or his figure face into a donkey? Hmm. So now if we make a cartoon about this, the Muslim will be offended. Honestly, if you make a cartoon about this, they get, a, I mean, this is funny and stupid. You get offended from us. You don't get offended from your prophet's stupidity and false promises or for a, for a false threat. So look what happened here. Just to explain to you, you know, maybe you are not aware yet. You see the teachers, teachers, they use images in order to, for education purpose. Uh, you are a fool why don't you don't leave okay a miracle let me send you free shipping and hand it into Allah you stupid you are coming to my page asking me to leave you idiot I think this is what Muhammad he talked he was talking about people like you when he spoke about donkeys so according to your prophet hadith which we showed you with the reference and it's sahih if you raise your head before the Imam finished the prayer, Allah will make a head, your head look like this. Now I want you to raise your head before the Imam finished the prayer and post a picture of you in Facebook. Oh, you should not post it there. Post it in Donkey Facebook. This is what your prophet said. They will be offended. Here we go. This is your prophet saying that. The Prophet of Allah, he said, isn't it he who raises his head before the Imam afraid that Allah may transform his head into that of a donkey or his figure face, in between two bracket, into that of a donkey. Hmm. <clears throat> no comment. 
And now if we make a cartoon about it, they will get offended. And what they will say, hold on, somebody will say this is Daif, it's not it's not true story. And Mr. Sahil Bukhari, you idiot. What Daif? You cannot criticize the Muslims by the deeds of any individual. We are not criticizing Muslims, we are criticizing Islam. Man, do you have something wrong with your head, my friend? I don't know what are you eating. We are talking about Muhammad, not about you. Who are you? This is Muhammad teaching. Or maybe you are talking about the title. Well, the title he said, and we're answering him, the guy who said that. <clears throat> Who is a Muslim, true Muslim, he believe what he's seeing in the screen. So Allah will make you a donkey if you don't, if you raise your head. Okay, you are a Muslim now. You are praying for Allah. You 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 do jihad. Uh, you hate Christian prince. You hate whatever people you hate. Allah told you to hate. The Hindus, the Jews, the atheists, you know, whatever. And now just because you left your head before the Imam finished, how you will know he finished? Because everybody, every, every one of you, his head down, facing the bum of the one before him. How you will know that he is done? So now if you, but what, what if you, you have to? So the second you lift your head up, Allah will make you a donkey. And here remember, by the way, Muhammad, he make it clear, his face, That would be fun. You will look like a human with the with the face of a donkey. This is remind me of a movie. Hold on. I think Muhammad he got he got inspired by that movie. <clears throat> Let us see. Uh, I cannot uh, find the movie make sure I, oh, hey, okay, I, I, found, I found it yeah it's not uh, okay I found it ah, I was wondering where Muhammad he got this is it from now we knew <clears throat> true story Come on, hold, hold on. I, I think I I forgot the window open and the rain is coming. Give me a second. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Done. Okay. So. Uh, I, I think we have enough for today. Brothers, Alhamdulillah, everything the Prophet he said, it come to be true, and he made the prophecies about everything we see around us today, including satellite, cement, cell phone, paper currency, pictone, falafel, shawarma. You cannot name one thing exists in this earth Muhammad did not predict it according to Muslims. <laughs> no, 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 guys, don't send me text to uh, Debate TV, Skype. As I said, uh, uh, maybe starting from next week, we will start taking calls in Paltok because the Skype is, is messed up. And when I open my Skype, it's really crazy. I mean, any one of you who text me six months ago if you text me now i have to go text back take six months back after all those people who there are thousands to find you and i have to look for you just forget we will try to use pal talk it's a lot easier uh and the one who is not willing to use you know to download pal talk to call me eh, i have no need of him right uh, do, do we have any Muslim? Name of my book? I have many books. Which one?
call you Ashraf? You are, you are Ashraf? Oh, okay. Okay, Ashraf, how are you, Ashraf? Here you will find a list of my books. <clears throat> how you can clean your sky? I need to spend 10 years to clean it. I was thinking to make a new account, but it's going to end the same. I will start with, you know, the problem is, those who they are texting me are people, for sure, I do not know. And, you know, I mean, hi, CP. Are you CP? Uh, add me, please. 90, maybe 5% of people who they are texting me in Skype, they don't even have a business. I mean, I don't know why they even add me. I have no idea. You know, I mean, why you want to text me? Add me. Why, why you want me to add you? Right? So. <clears throat> He did not predict me. No, he did. He did. He did. Trust me, the Muslim, they will find you averse. Can I call you in Skype? No, Mr. Fast Prophet. Sorry. I don't feel even like, I don't feel like talking. Because, you know, after I saw the cartoon of Muhammad, I lost my appetite of talking. That's why I'm just talking for the last hour and a half and 40 minutes only. This is what happened to me when I when I lose my appetite, and uh, you know, uh, and get scared. Uh, uh, is the time being answered because your laptop maybe earlier? I don't know what I talking about. Anyway. So, do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Oh, you mean the time in my uh, my lab my laptop is wrong? Well, maybe. It means maybe we can fix that. Do we have any Muslim have a comment? It should have changed by itself, actually. Because I was traveling. <clears throat> Called Ashraf, you want to listen? What Ashraf? Can you answer my question? What is your question, my friend? I don't see your question. Can you translate your videos and books to French? My friend, I don't speak French. But I have a book in French, The Secret of the Prophet Arab. You can find it on Amazon. Very wonderful translation. Right? You can get one of my books in French language already. I'm trying to find the question. When, when a person, he says to me, can answer you my question, and then his, his question will come after 10 minutes. How am I going to find your question? Any Mohammedan have anything to say? Hey, my friend, no. Don't text me in Skype to find a surah. First of all, I don't answer text. I mean, unless you are here, like saying to me, I want something, I want to call you, and you want to debate me, and then I, I will notice your name, you know, tell me what's your name there, I will. but otherwise, I have tons of people, they keep asking me, and if I, if I want to answer everyone as asking for hadith or reference, I will spend the coming life just answering the, the text messages in Skype. So, watch my videos, download them, take the reference, and save yourself, and save me the time of answering you in the future. I have all my reference on my books. Read my books. Here, when, uh, anything we say, it's in the screen. So why you need to ask me about reference? Right? Any Muslim want to say anything before we finish for today? Anyone? Any Mohammedan? Alright. Guys, don't forget to download the videos because 
as you know I don't keep my videos so I'm going to take down the videos I made yesterday and the one before and the one before people they ask me why I don't keep them the answer is why I should keep them I take them down so people can download them and knew they will not come back and find them later here so they will download them and by doing that we will have the videos all over and by doing that we have those videos are uh, you know uh, let us say publish everywhere and they will be saved in better way is the Quran Sahih or Daif according to the Muslims sometimes it's Daif the vent <laughs> you are talking to who as an example if you are talking to Mimi hijab you say to him Allah have part he say who said so <laughs> who said so <laughs> Allah said so, Muhammad said so, the angels they said so, the Quran said so, all of those said so, and who said so? To the bend, you're talking to who? When they won, they never heard of this before. When they won, they heard it. You know? I never saw one single Muslim, actually the only single Muslim he answered the truth about Islam. I mean, you can find them, uh, but those are very rare, and mostly they are ISIS members. The rest they will not tell the truth. You will find a video where Fifi he says Allah have hands. You watch the video of Mimi says to David Wood who said so. Okay, so which one of you is saying the truth? Zakir Naik says Allah have hands. Allah have foot. How will it look like? We don't know. But Allah have foot. Yes, brother. Is the book or the hand of Allah like the hand of a human being? No. But he have hands. So you ask them who said that? Who is the one? Who is behind the, you know this denial? So they fabricate answers in order to win an argument, which means they don't. They are not being truthful when they debate you about their cult. This is why when you, if you think you are going to debate a Muslim, good luck with that. Especially those who they are, their profession is to do this business. They will never answer. They will never give you the truth. And the Muslims will not be offended even by giving false answers. As an example, you know, when uh, uh, when Mimi, he said, who said so? Why the Muslim did not say to him, shame on you to say that? So are you denying what the Quran is saying? Not a single Muslim made a video to say, you're lying, man. Why? Because they understand that here the purpose is to fight the debater. The one who is trying to prove Islam to be false. So as long the intention of lies is good in Islam, so the intention is protected. You can lie. You can say who said so. Even if this is against the Quran teaching. Right? Uh, in my Polish book, seven years, I don't know, we, would say, we can check. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? All right, I think we already we passed the two hours, so I think now it's good for oh, not two hours yet. Yeah, this is a short video of mine. I remember my video is always short. This is one hour and forty-seven minutes. Very short. The title of my new book, Muhammad, the Messenger of Shaitan. Well, you know, there's a book already written by a very famous man. His name, uh, Salman, uh, uh, Salman Rushdie. He said, uh, he, he named his book, The Satanic Verses. And the funny, the Muslims, they get so upset. But this is what the Quran says. The Quran says that Muhammad, he received Satanic Verses. The Quran says, uh, Oops, we are typing in English. Chapter 22, verse number 52. This is what is funny about the Muslims. You know, you read for them what the Quran is saying, they go crazy. When this man, he, you know, he made a book, it's called Satanic Verses. 
every single Muslim in the world, he go, Allahu Akbar, death to this man, death to this man. This guy is just quoting the Quran. The stories exist in every single book. Even Ibn Kathir, you know, the Muslims, they say to you, go and read Ibn Kathir in English. It doesn't say what we doesn't say that, CP. This is in English. Go and read the Arabic. And Ibn Kathir is quoting what other Muslims they said. Ibn Kathir wasn't in the time of Muhammad anyway. He came long after Muhammad. But he's quoting the witnesses, and the Quran conf confirm what happened. Shaitan he throw in the mouth of Muhammad satanic verses, and Allah he promised he will take it off. If you ask a Muslim, did Shaitan he throw? He said, no brother. It says here he would take it off. If he did not throw, he would not take any. I mean, why you need to take off something is not there. How you can do that? But Allah will cancel anything that Satan throw in. In where? Allah throw in where? Hmm. And how I know now that this verse itself is not made by the devil himself. So people, they notice that Muhammad is, is getting revelation from shaitan. This is what the verse is saying. Shaitan, he gave him revelation. So how I guarantee that this verse itself, to make you relax, because Muhammad got busted. Oh, don't worry. Any verses shaitan he cast, I will take it off. Maybe shaitan, he made the same verse too. The same verse saying he will cast away what shaitan he throw in the mouth of Muhammad, it can be from the devil. What is my guarantee? Right? And you know, if you go and read the interpretation, this is chapter 22, verse number 52. If we go to the official Islamic website of the King of Jordan, and read the interpretation. You see, this is this is their website. We read for them what they how they understand it. This is how you understand it. They say to us, "This is a lie." Read carefully. Here, the prophet he prophets had during an assembly of men of Quraysh. After reciting the following verses from Surat Al Najm, Surah I mean uh, chapter. Uh, have you considered Allah al uzza and Manat the third? And then he continued, he added as a result of shaitan casting in his tongue. Where? In his tongue. <laughs> Who is saying that? Christian Prince is lying. It doesn't say that, CB. This is your book. This is Tafsir al Jalalain. And this is your official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan. Where the shaitan he cast? In his mouth, in his tongue. So the tongue of Muhammad in this moment, according to you Muslims, he was reciting satanic verses. And then they will say to you, it doesn't say that ZB. in the front of you and then brother look look how funny the story and then brother Jibreel however Jibreel brother later he informed him that this is of the shaitan <laughs> so the prophet himself he did not notice that this is not Quran I mean, don't the Muslim they say to us, who can make Quran like the Quran of Allah? Nobody. Allah is challenging you to make Quran. Here we go, Shaitan, he made Quran, and Muhammad himself did not notice that is not Quran. You know what I mean? If no one can make Quran like the Quran, so how in the world Muhammad he received the Quran of Shaitan and he did not notice? And later Jibreel he came to his house. Oh, he was looking at now, and he opened the door, and Jibreel was so upset. Khabibi Muhammad, Khabibi Muhammad. You know, Jibreel, don't talk like this. Come on. I mean, you want an angel of Allah to talk like this? Khabibi Muhammad, like a Jew? No. Prophet Muhammad, it would be thick. Who are you? 
My nickname is Dakar Naik. And my well known in that guy name is Jibril. You are Jibril? You look like Zakar Naik, man. Papa Mohammed, you made a big mistake. And you need to fix it. What mistake I made? The verse that you caught in the mosque is not from Allah, it's from the devil. You must be kidding me. It's not from Allah, it's from Shaitan. Yeah, the brother. I mean, Prophet. And you have to fix it. But, but now everybody heard me saying those verses and they bow down behind me and they believe in it. So what we will do? Don't worry, brother. Allah, I mean, Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet. Allah wa peace upon him, Prophet. And uh, Allah wa uh, peace, uh, you know, uh, Prophet. So uh, anyway, the, what was the topic? Uh, you were telling me about the satanic verses, which I say. Okay, Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet. Allah wa akbar. Masallah, alhamdulillah, Prophet. Yeah. What uh, the topic again? Uh, it was about the satanic verses which Shaitan he cast to me. Okay, Prophet. Alhamdulillah. Masallah. Uh, Bismillah. Yeah. And we are uh, tracking the names of those people who they are insulting you, Prophet. What was the topic? Zakar Naik. It is the satanic verses which Shaitan he gave to me, as you just told me. I'm so upset. Help me, please. We need to do something. Okay, Prophet. Beat upon him. Allah Akbar, Alhamdulillah, Matallah, Ibi, Abdullah, yeah, what, what was the topic? What was the topic, Muslims? So Allah later, he sent him Jibreel. Hmm. True story. What was the question? <laughs> Sound like two different people in the room. Exactly. What do you think? It's one people, man. What do you think? I have like this disease. It's called Safra Safraniza, Saf, Saf, uh, Safra Safra Stan, something. You know? No, I don't have that. This is uh, Doctor Zakanek himself. He's here. You know? <sighs> anyway, I think we have enough for today. Uh, don't forget to download the video. I hope you guys download the videos. And please subscribe to those who download my videos in order to keep tracking with the videos which I make. Because I download, uh, sorry, I make them. And then Allah will cast, will, will take whatever satanic verses from their videos. <laughs> so subscribe to those people who they are uh, downloading my videos you know give them help too uh, you know give them a like and uh, don't ask me where is the video you made yesterday because it's going to disappear a few hours from now this video might disappear actually let me go right now as we speak and I'm going to delete the videos which is made in the few few days you know what I will give you just a uh, 30 minute to download all the videos I I still have them live uh, in my channel before we take them down all right so if you are interested go and download right now with this I want to say thank you all for being here may the Lord bless you and again we are saying the truth and the truth will set us free who get offended who don't get offended that's not the problem get offended the truth hurt Cartoon is a very clear image presenting the stupidity of your prophet. You get offended of your stupidity, not of the cartoon. This is the fact. You are off offended because the cartoon presents what your prophet did. Not a single cartoon of those is not telling a true story mentioned in your books. So the real cartoon is your books, as you say. A prophet of God, shaitan cast in his tongue, and then Allah, he sent him an angel, said to him, my friend, you give satanic verses, and the funny they say, you know what, you can make Quran like the Quran. Yet Muhammad himself, somebody gave him Quran, and that body is the devil himself. And the Quran passed the test. Muhammad did not notice that this is not from his God. He did not notice. Why he did not notice? For a very simple reason. For he is a false prophet. And the story is just to cover the stupidity of this person. You Muslims worship, you claim he's a prophet, but the fact you worship him to the point you are willing to kill a human being just for he insulting a man. People make, people they say the F word to Jesus in TV, in movies. 
we will never kill anyone. Therefore, we will never harm anyone. Is that because we are not capable of harming? No, anyone, you know. Actually, a Christian in USA are the most, let us say, well-armed people. 98% or 99% of those who join USA Army are Christians. When I say Christian, I mean Christians. Most of them. From heavy-duty Christian families. Uh, so, killing is easy, but this is evil. If a Muslim insulted Jesus, and you must have you insult Jesus every day. For us, we believe he is a, he's God. You say the Bible is corrupt. You say uh, Christianity is false. You say Jesus is just a prophet. All this is an insult to him. But we will not go and kill you. We will debate you. We will, you know, we will show you the truth. Go make a, make a cartoon. What the difference between somebody making a cartoon or somebody making a word? Saying the Bible is false. Just saying. We can make a cartoon about the Bible is false. Same. So, you want to kill people for they express their belief? And then you don't want anyone to be upset from your belief? You think you can stop people from believing in what believe by being violent? No, actually you convince now everybody in France that Islam is evil. If there's one person in France, he was not really... He, he was supporting the idea of Islamophobia because many stupid people in France they think that those who speak against Islam they are Islamophobic as you know title they frame you they smear you <coughs> but now every one of them believe Islam is dangerous every single house in France is disgusted because of Islam unless they are Muslims so what are you doing is a great advertising for the truth you are proving us right. Thank you very much. For sure, I'm sorry for this poor man, the teacher who was killed. But his death will not go in vain. A lot of things will change in France, trust me. A lot of things will change. The same as a lot of things change in USA. You see, in TV, you will see a politician saying to you, uh, we respect Islam. This is garbage. They say to you, this is politics. Behind the scene, all of them, they don't. They don't. Behind the scene, all of them, they say the, the truth. All of them, they are convinced Islam is evil. Islam is violent. Islam is aggressive. So, you know, Things is changing, and you are working for it. And it's changing not for your benefit. The, the head of the sheikhs in Egypt, he said we should criminalize. He condemned the killing of this teacher. At the same time, he said we should criminalize anyone who criticizes religion. He just said this coward, the sheikh of Azhar in, in, in Egypt, that killing this man was, le was legal, was lawful. He's a criminal. He just saying, let us do it by law, Islamic law. And the funny, this coward sheikh, who is saying, let us criticize, let us uh, forbid criticizing religion. All of Islam is based on criticizing religion. If you open the first chapter in the Quran, from the first page in the Quran, it's insulting the Christians and the Jews, saying, oh Allah, don't make us the same as the Christians and the same as the Jews. You see, when you read translation, you don't see the word Christians, right? There is no word of Christian. Where, is, where it says the Christian and Jews? No, but this is about the Christians and the Jews. Don't make us in the bath of those who they are, plus not, or those who they are cursed. Who are they? Christians and Jews, hey, let me show you. All your religion is about insulting others. You call us pigs, you call us kuffar, you call us animals, you call us the worst of the creatures. And you are saying we should criminalize the one who criticizes religion. The first one we will put in jail is your prophet. Because not only he criticizes 
He killed those who don't agree with him. Read with me. This is the interpretation according to Islam. Okay, read the brother. Read the brother. You have favored with guidance uh, in this religion, in this, now in this time, together with us, relative uh, cause uh, substituted, blah, 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 blah. And then he says, not the path who they are against whom their worst, namely the Jews and the Christians. Those who are, who are astray, namely the Christians. And those who they are cursed, namely the Jews. Read it. And the funny, in France, if you deny the genocide of, of, uh, of the Jews, you go to jail. So how come you approve Quran, which is belief in the genocide of the Jews and genocide of the Christians? How you agree to open mosque for people believe that every single Christian and Jew should be killed? Even Muhammad, he said, that time will come and the Muslims and the Jews, the Muslim will attack the Jews because now all the Christians are killed, supposedly. The last will be left as Jews. And then when a Jew, he tried to hide behind a rock or a tree, the tree and the rock itself will scream, saying to Muslims, there is a Jew, there is a Jew behind me, come and kill him. So why don't ban this such a religion? How in France, if you deny the genocide of the Jews by Hitler, you go to jail, and this book author is allowed. See it? Chapter 9, verse 29, kill the Christians, kill the Jews, unless they pay you or they die. Chapter 5, verse 14, the Christians are people of hate and Allah will spread hate between them. Endless numbers. So how this book is allowed? So the solution for Europe, if they want to really fight it, is to ban Islam. Islam should be banned. Islam is the problem. It's not the terrorist. Did you ask yourself how those terrorists became terrorists? After reading what? What exactly? Where is the fuel coming from? When a believer, he believes in something, and he practices what he believes, and you allow his belief in your country. Why are you upset from what he did when he is practicing his belief, which you approve? You know what I mean? If you are approving Islam to be a religion in France, and then a person who is a following Islam, he practiced what Muhammad said. What Muhammad said? I have been commanded to kill all mankind unless they convert to Islam. I was victorious by terror. If Muhammad was commanded, that means all the Muslims commanded as Muhammad was commanded. All mankind, either they convert or they die. This is what Muhammad believe, and this is what they teach in their mosque. And then you wonder why, why a person he is 18 years old, he go and kill somebody in the name of his God. What is God? He use it. Somebody saying, what the word do Arab Christians use to refer to God? Word Arab, correct? No, some Arab Christian even they use the word Allah because they live between Muslims, and even the translation, the false translation of the Bible using the word Allah, which is false. Because in order to be honest in a translation, you cannot use a word that is not there. No way we can find in the Hebrew or in the Aramaic book, the word Allah. But because they, you know, they grow under the threat of ISIS, all of Islam is ISIS since Muhammad time until now. All those Christians who live in the Middle East, in order to live and to know why, why there is some Christians still left, is it because Islam is nice? No. You pay. You pay for every day you live. The Quran says so. 
and the Muslims agree. When when ISIS they occupy Christian towns and villages in Syria, why not every Christian there was slaughtered? Because they paid, as Muhammad said. They are practicing what Muhammad he said. You go over there, you occupy their town, you give them two choices. Either they convert to Islam or they pay. The third one is to die. And this is in chapter 9, verse 29. This is the truth. In order to kill every single Christian or a Jew, unless he pay or he convert. When a Muslim he says to you, how come there's Arab Christians still exist? First of all, like the word Arab Christian is not too much accurate, really. I mean, there's some Arab. Arab is a word meaning people of the desert, who they are Christians. But the majority, they are not really Arab. Egyptian are not Arab. They are Egyptian, Coptic. However, how the Coptic they stay? There's 10 million, more than 50, maybe 15 million in Egypt. They are, or maybe 20 million. I don't know. Because Muslims always to down, try to downgrade their numbers to give them less uh, important jobs. How they stay? Go read the history. From their blood. They pay for it. Every single Christian who was there, living under the Caliphate, he paid to stay Christian. And he lived with humiliation. This is the truth. There's, there's an area in Egypt, it's called Dam Nhur. Dam Nhur. What that word mean? Let me type it for you. You see what, what we are sharing here with you is the is the life which written and history written by blood, literally. Demenhor. This word doesn't make sense. Anyone who speaks Arabic like what is that Demenhor? Dam Nahor. That is the word. Rivers of blood. They slaughtered millions of Coptic Christians to the point the rivers are not any color except blood. They bring them to the rivers and they slaughter them. So until now, that area is called Dominohor, rivers of blood. History is written, but who want to read it? And by the way, those are, we can find that. Even Muslim history, is they are proud. You see, in the, in the past, because Muslims are the over, you know, like, I mean, they are the one who is powerful, and you are the weak. So in their, in their books, they write what they did, and they are proud about it. Today, you speak to a Muslim, he says, this is not true, this is, you know, because they are weak. Just wait. If they are the majority, if they are the one who control the world, they will say, yes, we did this, and we will do it now. We did it yesterday, and we will do it today, to, tomorrow to you. All right now they are doing in Armenia the same and the whole world is watching two nations one of them is more than a hundred million population and the other one is a five six time population the, the the people of Azerbaijan are inside Iran alone is more than 20 millions fighting a small tiny country if we can call it a country it's called Armenia and everybody's watching This is what happened when you are a poor nation. You know, you remember when, when uh, uh, in Africa there was a war between two tribes, the Tutsi and what? I forget the other one. 
more than 600,000 people killed in less than six months, slaughtered, burned alive. Nobody sent army, nobody sent peace forces, nobody care. Why? Because they are black, African, poor. When Saddam Hussein took over Kuwait, you remember? I don't know how good your memory is. When Saddam Hussein he took over Kuwait, every single nation sent an army. What happened? Why Kuwait is so important? Everybody care for what is right, what's wrong. Kuwait is not even in the size of a, of a city. What Kuwait? Kuwait is so small, tiny. The population of Kuwait at that time was about 200,000. The whole country. USA sent the army, Marines, Canada, Australia, England, France. I mean, you name it. I mean, we're just, you know, naming the important countries. Everybody sent the army. How come? The total citizen of Kuwait who was killed during Saddam Hussein attack, not even 10. In the speed of flight, right away, they stop preparing armies and sending weapons. You know, 200,000 American soldiers mobilized to Saudi Arabia. What, what happened? What happened? How come when the Tutsi and the Hutsi, whatever, Hutu, they were killing each other, 600,000 slaughtered. Nobody sent his army because those are poor black African. They don't have oil. Do you have oil? If you have oil, we will send army for you. Do you have money? And this is what happened now in Armenia. A nation is being slaughtered and the whole world is watching. Azerbaijan have gas, Armenia don't. Which one they take side? Azerbaijan. Europe is buying the Azerbaijani gas. They will not make Azerbaijan upset. If you have oil, you know, if you go to Sudan as an example, just to show you how the hypocrisy in this world work. The Christian in Sudan, they were suffering for years and years and years because of the Islamic occupation. They put them under Sharia law, they tortured them, they killed them, they kidnapped their children. Then suddenly, Obama, he decided to make the south of Sudan a state. He said, that's it. Those people, they deserve to have a state. What happened? Those people are fighting for their freedom for years and years, and tens of thousands of people, they die. Guess what? They discover a lot of oil in south of Sudan. Now it's a country by itself. And guess what? Who is the one, the first one who sponsored to be a South Sudan? Obama, the Muslim Obama. And how in the world Muslim Obama is dividing Sudan, the Muslim country? Because by dividing it, we will be able to send our companies who they are paying Obama. They are the one who made him president to South Sudan and they take over the business. So Obama, in less than 24 hours, this land became the south of Sudan. See how fast it is? He submitted the papers to the United Nations. They meet urgently. And overnight, we have a new country. It's called the south of Sudan. The south of Sudan, nobody remember it until they discover oil after they discover the oil everybody is supporting the state of south of sudan but the christians before they were dying getting killed raped sharia allah you know unjust it's okay who care they are just african people let them die that was before obama no actually i remember uh let me let me be sure because I remember clearly, if I'm mistaken, I will say I'm mistaken. Hold on. South of Sudan. OK. 
country. Maybe I'm mistaken, but I remember the one who made uh, for sure the one who made it uh, submit the uh, uh, the order. It was USA. Uh, okay, 2011. 2011, right? Okay, in 2011, who was the president? July 2011. Huh? Barack Obama. <clears throat> or maybe it was in the year 2011 he wasn't president yet I'm not sure you can check it out anyway but this is the truth no it says in Google it says it says 2011 I'm not you know I just search I don't remember the date exactly I just did search it says that South of Sudan split in 2011, became two countries. Right? <clears throat> uh, anyway, but I mean, regardless of the, the name of the one who was the president, but this is how it is. This is how easy it is to make a create a new country. The Armenian in in uh, 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 in the area which they are fighting about it now, the majority there are Armenian, and this is their land. History, you know, prove that. How come nobody would say, okay, let's make it a country? Nobody would do that. Azerbaijan have oil, have gas. Armenia don't. If Armenia tomorrow they find a lot of gas, then they will make their new country for you. Do you have gas? Can you give us a good price? Then we will support you. Are you rich? You have a lot of money? All right? Yeah, anyway, maybe some information I have, but as I remember, you know, things is, is, is the speed happened after they discovered the oil. Otherwise, those people they are fighting for the rights. They have it. They have the case in the United Nations forever. But nobody sponsored it and nobody supported. Since they have the oil, things became so fast. And look, those Christians are lucky. They are living in the land which is green. You see, most of those areas which where Muslim live, it's a, it's a it's dead desert. There's nothing. It's a big in size, yes, but there's nothing there. Maybe they have oil for now, but that oil will not stay. Actually, I I I I believe that oil. You know, many years ago they say oil will 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 stop disappear, but obviously it's not. But I believe still still the oil industry will not be flourishing anymore, and the money of it will be dying. Right now, we have many companies, they are making uh, cars which is run by electricity and they are way more efficient than before. So before people, they did not go to the electric cars because they are expensive, they are not efficient. I mean, you you charge your car the whole night and then you, 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 you lose the charge in two hours. Now there's cars, they run by electricity. You can drive the whole day. You can go 600 miles away. You can go at maybe a thousand. And now they are working in new batteries, you know, new generation of batteries where you can store energy in a for a long, long time. When those things are done, our, you know, the oil industry is, is not really, is not needed. So all those who are making money from the oil industry, they will find different business. You see, everything you see in movies, in fiction movies, is going to happen tomorrow.
right? Everything you see in the fiction movies. You know, in fiction movies, long time ago, they show you that the delivery will be by an airplane for shopping. It happened. In fiction movie, they, they showed you you will go to the space. It happened. In fiction, all the fictions, all the fictions, or this they call it science fictions, maybe maybe 90% of it is going to be true. So things are changing so fast. I don't know if you saw the, the company which is owned by the owner of Tesla. I don't know what is the name of his company. He have other company. He will transform weapon and goods from USA to Afghanistan. Anyone knows what is the number? How long is going to take for the trip? Anyone knows? This is USA, just to give you an idea. You know what USA is. This is USA. And where is Afghanistan? Here we go. How long is it going to take? Anyone heard the news? One hour. <laughs> Can you believe it? One hour from here to here yes and the delivery will arrive safe secure and extremely fast that is fiction if I tell you that actually just uh, a month ago you will not believe it this is gonna be true how you can do that in one hour so what is a fiction is coming to be true now they are you know I mean everything you hear I mean if you see what they are planning for you know Trump he established the the, 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 the space task force what is it exactly what is the dream the dream is they will establish bases in Mars and it's going to happen just count my words they will make farms they will make cities they will occupy Mars and they will occupy other planets. And the one who have more advantage is the one who own more planets in the future. For sure, the Muslims are the last one to be there. If they go there, it's going to be by Mr. Joe and Mr. James. <clears throat> right? So, uh, things is changing so fast and uh, you never know maybe I will move there before we get so old <laughs> yeah so you know there's there are things it's hard to believe it's coming to be true but it is true you know sometime you know a human mind cannot imagine those things to 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 be to be for real Uh, yeah you are okay with the earth I don't mind really to go a different place why not you see we are we are living this life and we saw enough of the earth I would like to see a different place I wish I wish there's a spaceship will like have this is a dream you know to have endless energy and this spaceship take me from place to place in this amazing universe created by God, non-stop. In the same time, as long as I wish this wish, I want to say, please, God, can you provide me with internet so I can go live <laughs> and get Muhammad busted, even though I am in the space? Because that would be more fun. Especially we can show the Muhammadan how Allah, he shoot the devil when he tried to go to the seven galaxy. In his bum by his stars no nothing wrong with going no actually I encourage those things you know because uh, see as long the purpose is not evil anything is good your intention is what give definition for who you are not what you do you might kill somebody by mistake but doesn't make you bad because you did it as long you did not do it 
you mean it. It was not intention. You drive in the highway, you hit a car, the person he die. Well, you kill the person. But your intention is not to kill him. Your intention is to go home to see your children, maybe. So it's the intention of what people do can give definition for what is good and what is bad. So go into the space as if it's for, for the benefit of mankind, why not? Uh, Zubair Adams, how are you Zubair? Are you a Muslim, my friend? You cannot fight if you don't have a brain? Uh, okay, that's good. Hmm. So those believe in 70 versions, they have a brain? And their God will get them in this private part? I mean, which one is bigger, your brain or your private part? So you are five, six foot tall, and your private part is endless. Eh, you have a brain. <clears throat> no, if I go to Mars, I will find Zachary Nike. He have a meeting there. Brother Tatar, the first one who did cover Mars is the Muslim. And those Kufar that sold the idea from us. Our prophet beat up on him. He is the first person to take a flying donkey and go to the Mars. Uh, brother, what it says in the hadith, the prophet he went to Ethiopia. Christian Prince, first of all, you are a liar. There is nowhere in the hadith it says the prophet he went to Ethiopia. Uh -huh. Well, it says that the prophet, he went and he found there the Nile River. Correct? Peter Breath, first of all, the Nile River, it exists first in heaven. Okay, and where is the Nile River is exist? In the heaven. But, but isn't it in Ethiopia? I just told you in heaven. So what is exist in, the, in Ethiopia now? Yeah. Are you there, Mr. Zubair? Your prophet, when he went to heaven, he found the Nile River and Euphrates. Euphrates is now coming from the south of Turkey, according to the map today, and Nile River is from Ethiopia. So your guy, your prophet Muhammad did not go to heaven, he went to Ethiopia. Now I'm sure you can ask Dr. Zak and Naik, he will get me busted so easy, and he will say the following. First of all, Christian Prince is a liar. It said in the Hadith, Hadith number Tayyip Bukhari, 5, 6, 1, 10, 1, 0, that Allah Prophet, when he went to the heaven, he found four rivers. Christian Prince, he said two rivers. So, I prove him to be a liar. Hey, but Zakir Naik, who cares about four rivers or not? Actually, that make it even more horrible. See, Hanun wa Jihan, those are rivers exist in the north of Turkey too. So three in Turkey, one in Ethiopia, where your property went to. Christian Prince, Sihan and Sihan are not in South of Turkey. They are in the north of Syria. Mm -hmm. But north of Syria is uh, south of Turkey. Christian Prince, I got you, but said. Hmm. That's where your prophet he went to. He found four rivers there. The Nile River is there. True geography. Right? If we make a cartoon about it, you will go crazy. This why actually I'm thinking if the Muslims if the Muslims they, they keep threatening us, etc. I mean they make a lot of threat lately to David Wood, etc. You know. I like to support them. If they continue doing that to their wives, etc. So we might go for additional move. We make cartoons about those stories. Like, look, this story is amazing, so beautiful. And actually, I can make it like a moving cartoon, like, you know, a 3D cartoon. That would be fun. And I would do the voice of Zach and Nike in the cartoon. The, the best time Zach and Nike answered a question when a Muslim woman, she asked him, not a Muslim woman, I think she was a Hindu or something. She said to him, why there's no Muslim woman? She is a prophet. He said, the sister asked a question. Why in this land there's no woman? She is a prophet. And I have to agree. 
in that land, they have no one with the Prophet. The reason they have no one with the Prophet in Islam because if they become a Prophet, they have to do the congregation. And if they do the congregation, they have to do to do the wudu. And if they do to do the wudu, they have to bend over. And that would disturb the believers. More than 20,000 people watching, he just said that in Islam, a woman, she cannot be a Prophet because she have ass. And if she bend over, Muslims will forget about Allah, they will focus on her ass. Not a single of you get offended. This is the reason a woman, she can't be a prophet because of her ass. May Allah ask you. So sometimes you wonder, well, those people, they get offended from what? I mean, when the Muslim, they make those statements, nobody get offended. Just because he's Zachary and I, but he's offending you. He's making fun of you. He's making fun of your brain. I mean, brother, you get the point there. <laughs> anyway, guys, 30 minutes ago, I said, okay, guys, I'm leaving. Thank you very much. Unbelievable. I hate you all. Just joking. Thank you all for being here. Don't forget to download the video. And this time, for sure, I'm leaving. Time to go. And may the Lord bless you. I am thinking to take some time, uh, but maybe not now. I mean, the, like... Usually I go in winter, I travel, you know, but because of Corona, I don't know where you can go. And, and it's even getting more ugly. Now they are closing more borders. So usually I take this time in the winter time to write my, to finish my books. But I don't know what this Corona, what I will do. I'm thinking to do something about it. Where, but where you want to, where you can go? You know, where you can go? I don't know. We will see. So I want to say thank you again for being here. May the Lord bless you all. And I will see you soon again. Don't forget to subscribe. And you can always subscribe to Patreon. And we appreciate those who always support us. God bless them. And I really appreciate every single one of you. Those who translate, those who download, those who share. And all support is needed. Thank you. God bless you. Christ is Lord. Islam is made by a dummy for the dummies. So are you a dummy? And finally I say, if a fool man like Muhammad can fool you, how fool are you? How fool are you? Thank you. Take care.